Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I wanted to have a quick discussion, kind of a follow-up video with you today about the titanium release from yesterday and titanium products in general. Um, there's a lot of misunderstandings out there and I want to clear some things up. First of all, what I want you to understand is that 90% of titanium products, especially cookware products, are made in China. There's some that are made in Japan, but the majority of them are made in China. So that is kind of something you're relegated to if you want to buy titanium cookware for resale. The other thing that you need to realize is that there are a lot of brands using the same factories in China. It's called OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturing. The stove is a very good example of that. The Pathfinder titanium stove, I've got one here in a small DCF pouch. I showed this stove yesterday, and it is the same exact stove as the BRS. No question about that, okay? I didn't design the stove. It was designed by the factory, and it was probably first branded by BRS. And that's the way things work with those factories. They're not branding them with their factory name. They are the OEM. And then when people buy the MOQ, which is the minimum order quantity, they offer to put your logo on that merchandise. So you can call them up and say, hey, I'm looking for a titanium stove. And they say, we have this one. We'll send you a sample. If you like it, the minimum order quantity is usually at least 1,000 is the minimum on anything. You can order the MOQ on these and we'll put your logo on them. No problem. So what you end up with is you end up with at least, I looked at Amazon today and there are at least seven brands. And I'm gonna, even going to give them to you right here. I believe in transparency. BRS, Outsmart, King Summit, Luxata, Sunrus, a no brand and Winoma are all using that exact same stove with their individual branding on it. Granted, BRS was probably the first ones that did it with that stove, but there are at least seven others besides Pathfinder that are using their brand on that stove. Now, let's discuss pricing while we're on that stove in particular, okay? Pricing is a tricky thing because if you only want to retail that item, in other words, you're only going to sell it retail, then you can have X amount of margin on that product, whatever your business model is for margin, and sell them all day long. However, if you plan to wholesale that item to someone, so you're going to support small businesses that may want to sell it in a mom and pop shop that can't afford to buy a thousand of them at a time and only want to order 10 or 15 or five, or maybe you're selling somebody that's going to buy 25 or 30 even at a time, like a bigger box store. In that case, you've got to have more margin because you have to be able to wholesale it and still make money. But that wholesaler has to be able to market up to what your retail price is, your manufacturer suggested retail price is, MSRP. And they have to be able to make money too because they're not going to sell it at X amount of dollars and have somebody come back and say, well, SRO is selling it for X amount of dollars. And then this guy says, well, I'm buying it from SRO and he's undercutting my pricing. You don't want that. So you've got to build those margins in. So if you plan to wholesale anything, it's going to be more expensive than if you just straight retailed it. And most of those stores or brands on Amazon, in fact, probably 90% or 100% of the ones that I just read to you are China brands. They're not American brands. So they are OEMing this stuff in China, branding it under a China brand, whatever they call their brand, and retailing it on Amazon. And that's the only place they're selling it. They're not selling it to anyone else so they can make X amount of margin and just hope they sell a thousand stoves on Amazon. And they may not even have to follow MOQs in country. I have no way of knowing that. I've never been to China to tell you. But there's a possibility they may not even have to follow those MOQs. And they might be able to have two or 300 of them made in the factory and just go pick them up. For us, we have to pay for anything we buy in China at least 50% up front. And then the other 50% before it ships. So our money is going to be tied up for a minimum usually of four to six months on anything that we have made over there. So let's talk about the bottle and cup, okay? There are some items that we have made that we own the tooling on. In other words, we had to design the product or have it designed around another product. But it's a product that's personal to us. And so we have to pay for the tooling on top of everything else. 
the cup that fits this titanium bottle is a good example of that with these large bat wing handles on it. We designed this cup to fit this particular bottle because there wasn't one out there and we wanted one that was nice and big that fit this bottle. So we bought the tooling and we own it. Nobody else can sell this cup, not even on Amazon, except us because we own this tooling for this cup. All right, this is a Pathfinder branded cup, but it won't be OEM to anybody else because we own the tooling. The bottle, on the other hand, is OEM by at least two or is branded by at least one other brand, maybe two. So what we did with this bottle and cup set is we decided we made a conscious decision that we were not going to wholesale the bottle and cup set as a set. We would only wholesale them separately so we could make our margin on them. If someone wants to buy them retail, it comes in a set at a lower price without the extra markup in there of being able to wholesale it because we're never going to wholesale this as a kit combo. So sometimes we can do things like that and get away with it, but there's other things you'll never be able to do that with, like the stove. The tent stakes are another very good example of something that we own the tooling on. You're never going to see this heavy gauge, heavy duty, eight inch long tent stake unless somebody else makes tooling that's exactly the same as this and pays for the tooling because we own this tooling. So it can't be sold to anyone else. So this Pathfinder TI stake is our design, our marketed product. Nobody else will have it. The Spork, on the other hand, again, OEM by at least three or four different people. I'm in the process of designing a longer Spork with some tooling cutouts in it for things like gas stoves and things like that but it's going to take again it takes a long time to get that stuff done because we have to send them the design they have to say yes we can make that we have to pay for the tooling they have to have the tooling made then they have to run samples and send us samples if those samples aren't right we got to send them back and get more samples then we've got to pay them the money to make the run they've got to make the run we've got to pay them the money to ship the product and we've got to wait for it to come over here across the ocean you're talking probably 2022 before we're gonna see that happen, or late 2021, at the earliest. Let's talk about the canteen set real quick, okay? Canteen set, this titanium canteen set, unfortunately, it's just expensive. No matter what brand you buy it under, it's expensive. Yes, you can buy it $3.95 or $4 cheaper on Amazon if you buy it branded by someone else. However, again, they're only planning on retailing it. They're never going to wholesale it. We had to put margin in this thing to where we could wholesale it. So it cost four bucks, five bucks more retail. Now, we did change the design on this canteen set slightly. Somebody asked about it in the Helicon pouch. There it is in the Helicon Essentials pouch. And this canteen set comes with a pouch of sorts when you buy it. It doesn't come without a pouch. It does come with a pouch. However, I didn't show the pouch because I'm not that proud of it. It's just a standard pouch that's put on every product by the factory. It's okay, but it's not that great. 99% of everyone who buys it's going to want to put it in a different pouch anyway, so I didn't bother showing the pouch, but it does come with one. However, it fits really good in the Silicon Essentials pouch, and I knew that from the sample that I got from them originally a year ago that we changed a little bit, so I just left it as is. Now, what did I do to this thing to make it a little bit different? Well, I didn't do that much, okay? All I did, and this is a tight fit. I'm gonna, I'll tell you now, it's a tight fit. But it goes in here, not a problem. So when we got the original of this, and if you look at the other OEM branded product that's out there on Amazon, there are some silly metal tabs on the bottom of these cups that are made for hanging it with wire over a fire. I can't ever imagine myself hanging something like this over a fire when I could just easily put it in the edge of the coals or put it on top of the fire. The same thing with the canteen cup. I would probably never put that in the fire. So the other problem with those little tabs on there were that they made it very difficult to go in and out of a standard canteen bag because they hung up on the edge of this lip every time you put it in and every time you tried to pull it out. So we asked the factory to just remove them all together. So that's the difference between this set and the other OEM branded sets. There's also a difference in this handle with a couple of the sets that I saw out there, or at least one of the sets I saw out there, has the same handles on the cup as it has on this. 
and I'm not a big fan of these type handles, but for a small unit like this, it's okay. For a canteen, I like to have those handles a little bit longer so that if it starts to tip, it catches on those handles and you've got that kind of stool three points of contact type of thing where it can't rock around too much. You can spread those out even if you wanted to and you get a good stable platform out of it. But again, I could never see myself hanging this thing to try to cook in it. So having those brackets on there was just a pain in the ass to be honest with you. So we got rid of it. So that kind of explains to you, you know, some of the equipment that we get, we design it. Some of it, we don't. If you see it out there under other brands, we probably didn't design it. I may have made changes, slight changes to it of some kind, but I didn't necessarily design it. We, those companies sometimes approach us and sometimes we approach them. If we have a company that we're working with that's making titanium already and we're looking for a certain product, we may call them up and say, hey, can you or do you already make something like this? And they may say yes, or they may say no. If they already make it, then they say, we'll send you a sample. And if we like what we see, then we go with it. If we don't like what we see, we don't go with it. So that's just a little bit of transparency about how this stuff works over in China. There are no catalogs per se, where you can just call up and say, hey, send me a catalog of what you got. I want to order 20 of these and put my logo on them. It doesn't work that way. The MOQs are always at least a thousand. That means your money, lots of it, is going to be tied up for a long period of time. And that's the other reason you have to bank on wholesaling some of this stuff. Because you have to have inventory turns. That money can't just sit and spin. If you've got, you know, $100,000 in canteen sets sitting on a shelf that you only plan on retailing, and you've got 1,000 of them, it may take you quite a while to retail 1,000 canteen sets. So you've got to figure in your mind, how quick can I sell those things? And what do I need to do to get them to move quicker so that I can turn that money over to make profit? Well, I have to be able to wholesale it as well. If I can wholesale 500 units and retail 500 units, now I set myself up better for being able to turn the money over, make a profit, and be able to get more canteen sets in here or something else that I want to sell. The other side of the coin is you have to think about sales. Okay, when you... When we have sales at holiday seasons and things like that, it's almost always 20% off. So you just knock 20% off of whatever margin you have by putting it on sale every time. So if you didn't mark it up, if you only marked it up 20% to begin with as a retail markup and you put it on sale, everything you sell, you make no money on. So you've got to mark it up, bearing in mind that you're going to have sales two, three, four, five times a year. The other side of the coin is commissions on sales. All of our instructors are Pathfinder affiliates. Sean Kelly from Corporal's Corner, Matt Mercer from Black Hat Bushcraft, Josh Enyart from Greybeard Green Beret, Paul Hack, uh, Adaptable Survival, Tony Powers from Pooter Stomper, my buddy out in Arizona, Andrew Heath. All of those guys are Pathfinder instructors. Kevin Baxter from Salty Dog Outdoors. All those guys have affiliate pages on my website and they get a 10% commission on any sales that they make through their affiliate link. So there's 10% of your margin again, gone. Every time one of those guys makes a sale, all of those things have to be planned for because you're trying to support the people below you and support the people around you. If I can't support small business by selling them smaller quantities of things that they can afford to buy so they can then retail it to their customers at the same price I'm retailing it for, then I'm not supporting small business around me. And that's important too. Now, there's one other thought that I want to leave you with while I'm on this short rant today. China is a major push-button issue with a lot of people. And I understand that. 100% I understand that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things you can't buy without getting them in China. And that's something that we all just have to live with. If you look around your house, 90% of the goods in your house are probably made in China. The phone that you're talking on or watching this video on or the computer all made in China. So it is what it is. If you say, I don't buy goods that are made in China, you're lying. Okay. If you're watching this video, you're lying. Unless you went to a library, turned on one of their computers and you're watching this video on someone else's computer, you bought something from China to watch this video. Here's the problem with that whole thing. We think that if we buy from China, we're not supporting American workers. And that is the furthest thing from the truth because once it's purchased from China and comes over here on a boat, think about the American hands 
that get paid to handle that product before it gets to you. It goes to an American dock with American workers, gets stored in an American warehouse with American workers, gets checked by U.S. Customs and moved to a shipping warehouse by American workers, gets shipped by some type of a courier service and loaded on their trucks or airplanes by American workers that are flown and driven by American workers, goes to a warehouse in the United States and unloaded by American workers, stocked and inventory by American workers, picked and packed by American workers, shipped to you by American couriers, by UPS, USPS, DHL, whoever it is, all of those people that had their hands on that merchandise before you got it in your hand, you supported by buying that product. And if you buy that product from an American company or an American brand, you're supporting that many more American workers. And then I support American workers by being able to wholesale that product to a mom and pop shop who can then feed their family and make their livelihood because they can only afford to buy 20 of something. They can't afford to buy a thousand and warehouse it. Just a couple foods for thoughts, trying to be transparent with you guys. I'm sure I'm going to get some grief from trolls over this video, but that is what it is. I appreciate your views, guys. I appreciate your support. We thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and all of that's important to us. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.